So welcome back, you guys. It's awesome to have you. Today is going to be all about how we can really look at this negative self-talk that's just holding us back. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. Join us because we're making it possible for busy women to sculpt and tone in just 15 minutes a day. It's your time to celebrate you, unleash your empowered self, and step back into your confidence. You can visit our store, bootybands.com, for the best female fitness products out there and subscribe so you get notifications when every episode drops. Today we're interviewing Anov, and she is a confidence and empowerment coach where she actually is going to bring us to what fears are holding us back. She is a writer, five times one of a co-authored book, The Power of Reinvention, and four ebook series titled Invest in Your Team's Confidence and Empowerment. So welcome, Anov. I'm so excited to have you here. So let's go, let's just immediately start off with your story about what brought you to be an empowerment and confidence coach. Right. Hi, Danita. So lovely to be here. Thank you. Uh, right. Yes, my story started like, I guess, many other stories of people who are feeling uh, not not loved, not confident, but with very low, uh, low self-esteem. And that was my story for sure for a very long part of my life. Um, when I was when I was growing up, I was always looking at other people looking for validation for uh for this hint and clue that I was actually, that I belonged and that I was loved and accepted. And I couldn't, I couldn't find it, not necessarily because it wasn't there in hindsight. I know that uh, I was just not able to translate it correctly. But um, at that time, it was a very painful existence for myself. I really didn't feel like I belonged. I didn't know who I was and my confidence was really, really low. But, you know, I... I managed to, to live my life and uh, it wasn't until I was a little bit older, I was around 23, my ex-husband uh, one day out of the blue said, right, you know, how would you like to, to get married? And my confidence and my mental state at that point was such that when he asked me if I wanted to marry him, even though I myself was thinking to myself, I should probably break up with him a couple of weeks before, I, I did this kind of calculation in my head thinking, well, I'm 23. I didn't really have a serious, no one loved me before, no really serious relationship before. And what are the chances that this is going to be any different moving on? And so in desperation, in definitely living through my fears and my disbelief that anyone could actually see me and love me for the way I was, I said, yes, let's get married. Uh, and we did. We got married, and what followed was another seven years of you know living together and just constantly trying to figure out what it was that I was doing there because it wasn't the life that I wanted for myself, and I couldn't bring myself to to do anything differently. It was like I was under some sort of a spell. But after seven years of marriage, I finally managed to say to him, "Look, that it's not working out," and I sent him back home. And I always say that I, I'm not very proud of the marriage, but I'm really proud of the divorce because that meant, you know, that was the beginning of a new chapter for me. But I say that and uh, still I, after he left, I felt very lonely. I didn't know who I was. I knew that I was on the, on the you know, on the verge of something really important and I didn't know what it was and I didn't know how to approach it. I felt very, very insecure about everything. Uh, and then I, I decided, you know, I should go and see a, a therapist. And on the days uh, before the internet, I just managed, you know, opened up the, the yellow pages, managed to find a therapist. And I just went there uh, to, to meet him. Uh, what happened <laughs> when I met the guy, uh, I, he, he met me in this huge empty church hall. Uh, and he was at the very far end of the church and I had to walk all the way to him. And he was like waving at me. And I remember as I was you know, getting closer to him, I realized that he was so drunk. It was like you could not mistake this. He was, you know, the fuel of the drink, drink was, it was so funny. But I was like, well, you know, I already booked it and I'm already here. So let's, let's have a conversation. Wait, wait, wait. Was, you're, you're seeing your therapist was drunk when you're walking to, okay. Oh, wow. This is good. This is getting good. Okay. Keep going. It was, it was really, it was really interesting. I was like, I was actually so lonely at that time, you know, all by myself. Um, 
I, d I actually really wanted to just have a conversation with someone. So I decided to ignore the fact that, the, you know, the fumes of the drinks were all around us. And I told him my story. And, and this guy, you know, he basically said just one sentence. And, and this sentence was, you know, changed my life forever. Because he just looked at me and he said, my dear, you're simply lacking the powers of your own convictions. And I was like, you know, I was like, oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so so uh, say it one more time. I want everyone to really hear this one line. So say it one more time. He basically said that I was lacking the powers of my own convictions. So what did you make that mean? That that line, like, what did that mean in that moment? How did you? How did you? Do, how could you interpret it in your own words? What what you made that mean in that moment? Exactly. So I, I really, I it hit me like a like a short like well, I was like. Oh my God! This is exactly what I've I've been doing all my life. I I knew that I had a voice and I didn't dare to use it. And if I used it, I immediately needed other people to to validate it and to say yes, this is a you know good voice, good idea. You can do this, all of that stuff. But I didn't believe for myself. If someone, if I said okay, I'm going to to do X, like start a new course or do a, you know start a business or whatever. If I wanted to do that and someone didn't say, yes, that's a wonderful idea, you can do it, then I would say, well, I'm not going to do it. And it's it's not even in the big things. It was even about, you know, taking a day off or, you know, deciding where to go on holiday. It was it was anything, anything and everything. I just didn't know what was the right decision for me. So let's even back up a little bit. So it sounds like what I'm hearing that when you weren't listening to your own voice and when this man came into your life and said, let's get married, there was a part of you that was like, no, the, that voice in you that was like, no, we should not get married. But the unconfident side of you just said, yes. And so when he said that phrase to you, uh, what was it? The, uh, you're not listening to your own convictions. You're lacking the powers of my own convictions. You're lacking the powers of your own convictions made you realize that you've had this inner like intuition, right? Like this inner strength and power in you that you have, you've been avoiding. So, because if you would have listened to it, you wouldn't have married this man. You wouldn't have done these X, Y, Z. Is that kind of what, is that what's coming around? Yeah, exactly. But it was, it, it, like I said, it wasn't even just the very big things like getting married. It was so many other things. I just constantly needed someone else to, to approve, you know, what I was doing and, and, what I was doing with my life and it was very strange because on the one hand I knew right I had my own voices my unconscious mind was telling me things that I did listen to and I did recognize that you know recognize these things as, as solid but still I allowed other people to to make the decisions and and to to advise me and if they advised me against what I was thinking for myself then I would take their word for it so I completely dismissed my own voice my own truth my own wisdom wow so how did this change for you once this therapist sat and told you hey you need to be listening to yourself what what shifted after this what what changed everything <laughs> Every, everything changed I I went back home and I was you know in deep in deep thoughts about everything that he just said and I recognized then that I was living in fear because I I didn't have the powers of my own convictions it meant that I I was listening to the fears. I was going through the fears. I was not daring to be who I who I am. I just listened to other people. I allowed other people to dilute my message. Actually, I didn't think that I had anything. It was it wasn't about me. It was all about other people helping me to to go through life in a sense. So so when I recognized that I allowed fears and insecurities and doubts to be constant guests at my table, I decided to do something else. I decided to not do that anymore and it it was really as black and white as as it sounds I created this formula for myself I said okay from now on this is how it's going to go down I'm going to ask myself anything that you know any decision anything at all I'm going to ask myself do I I have to stop you on the call can you guys hear the confidence now how she was like I created this formula for myself and this was like you can hear that it was now she's living her life for her Wow, I can feel the confidence. I just wanted to stop you. Okay, keep going, keep going. Right, so so yes, so then I created this formula. 
And it was for anything that I, I was, if I wanted to do something, I asked myself, do you want to do it? If yes, awesome. The next question had to be, does it scare you? So do you want to do it? Yes. Does it scare you? Hell yes. Is it going to kill you? If it's going to kill me, then, you know, back off, don't do it. But if it wasn't going to kill me, I was going to do it. And that was exactly what then took place. And immediately I put it into action. Wait, wait, wait. So now we can see who you are now. You are a confidence and empowerment self-coach helping all these people, men and women, and unlocking their fears, but also a writer five times. So I think it's fascinating from that. Would you ever have said in your most unconfident version of yourself that you would have ever have become this? Never. <laughs> no, that, that was never on the trajectory, trajectory. And actually, I was constantly asking myself, what, what, what am I good at? What can I do? What is my purpose in life? Again, asking, I remember asking my mom constantly to, tell, to give me some hints and clues of what, what it is that I could do. I didn't know. I didn't know. I was living life. I was progressing. I was doing things. But I had this other huge side that was doubting everything and anything that I was I was going through. I just didn't believe that I had what it takes to to become anything or anyone. But the interesting thing that happened after I made this you know formula decision, basically it took away this whole layer of fear, because as soon as I recognized that yes, I was going to do something that scared me. I was basically putting my, my arm on and I was like, right, we are doing this. And so, you know, I always wanted to, to go diving, for example, but I was terrified of that. I was like, I was convinced I was going to, you know, <laughs> basically drown or float out to the surface. But I was thinking about it and I thought, actually, I know so many people doing it. It's probably not going to kill me. So I'm going to do it. So I went to do my, my diving course. And then I did the advanced course, you know, and it was it was awesome. It was so freeing. It was like, you see, you don't need to worry about things. You can just go ahead and do them. And after that, I what did I do? I did a helicopter ride because that was, again, one of the things that scared me. Uh, I went. You traveling. guys listen to this. She yeah. is just conquering all of her fears right now. OK, so not only becoming a coach. And working with people okay then like opening your own business right and then the next is writing books and then the next is going from uh uh um diving to now would you say jumping out of a plane no 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 <laughs> i was just taking a, a, a helicopter ride oh helicopter was, ride yeah so look, look at her she's going to the depths of the ocean to now up in the air living okay keep going this is this is fascinating how you're just breaking through all of these fears yeah, I just have to say that the coaching and everything came later on. At that point, I was doing something completely different in my life. Um, but but yes, I, I did basically really look at anything that scared me and I did it. So, you know, I, I just said I was I went, you know, traveling in, in, in Rome by myself, making new friends as I went along. Again, everything that I did was really addressing a, a side of me that was very scared of being seen and being, you know, also, of course, being hurt. I didn't. I didn't want to be hurt. Uh, but but the bigger change came. Uh, I think it was around two thousand and one. I decided to 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 join something here that is called um, Ch uh, Challenge of a Lifetime, where you raise money for charity and then you go on a on a big life challenge. So I raised about two thousand five hundred pounds to uh, arthritis research campaign then went to climb the foothills of the Himalayas. And, and that was really, it was mind blowing. It was everything. Uh, not only, look, I've done this. I've raised so much money, which is, you know, <laughs> a huge task, but here I am climbing the foothills of the Himalayas with a, another incredible group of people that, you know, every, everyone had their own stories. And here I was in a group that was, and I was accepted for who I was. So that journey really taught me a lot. And at the end of the, the tour there, uh, we went to see a school. They said, hey, why don't you come and teach English for us? So I thought that's, that's, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to be here in the foothills of the Himalayas in Nepal, teaching English as a foreign language. So I went back to London, uh, did a year long uh, teaching English as a foreign language course. By that time, the Maoist came to Nepal and I was like, wasn't sure if I, I would you know, not die. So I decided to go to Mongolia instead. 
Um, and, and it just continued from there. Anything that scared me, I, I said, yes, I'm going to do it. So after Mongolia, I was there for a year. Then I went traveling, uh, backpacking across Southeast Asia for 10 months. And then I, in India, I met, a, there was a British Open University Day something, uh, and they were recruiting people to come and study at, in British universities. So I, I, I managed to be invited to, to do a master's degree at a university, even though I never had a first degree. And, and that, was, that was really mind blowing for me because I was convinced that I would never be a good student. I wasn't the student material and here I was. Uh, this, is, this is fascinating. So let's, let's actually break down that statement you said again. So, so you, the statement you live by now that took you from this unconfident, never not living your life at all, like literally making all the wrong decisions because you weren't making any decisions for yourself. You were taking on everybody else's thoughts and words. So the statement you said again, let's, if you guys, if you guys got a journal, you guys got to write this down. Okay. So say it one more time for us, Enough. My formula was very simple. The first question is, do I want to do it? Yes. Does it scare me? Hell yes. Is it going to kill me? Preferably not. And then just do it. Really wow. just do it. You guys, and that's it. Listen to that. Like if you write that down and really ask yourself when you're going towards fear, because Anav, I think this is really important. We talked about how people that are falsely safe in their comfort zone. And really, mm. when we go towards fear, it actually becomes smaller, right? It becomes less big. So tell us a little bit more about why that comfort zone, why we stay in it, but really what's outside of fear? Exactly. I mean, the, the, the point is that um, it's very easy for us to, to stay inside of our comfort zone. You know, we, we are here, we're in a place where it's familiar and it's comfortable and it's, it's, it's known. And so when we think about something that we want to do, but we haven't done yet, we, we can't see it because we don't, we don't have a mental image of what it's going to be like. But what we do know and which we feel very comfortable with is the, having the doubts and the fears and, and the what ifs and the probably is going to go this way or that way. So what then tends to happen is that we stay in the fear and we don't dare to take the first step. And, and so actually what we want to say is that, you know, we can't predict the future. We can't know what it's going to be like, but we can look at the past and see that actually it all worked out. It all, all worked out so perfectly. So let's trust. Let's trust that, it, you know, whatever it is that we want to do is going to be uh, just as successful as, as the past was. Because even if we did things that, you know, didn't end up to be as we wanted it to be, what we got instead was, you know, without a doubt, much, something much better. Um, so how, yeah. let me ask you a question. So how is your comfort zone a trap? The comfort zone is a, is a trap because we feel we feel safe in it. We feel like everything that we have is just good. It's just perfect. It's, it's not a big problem. And because we're so scared of coming out of the, the comfort zone, we actually, we, we basically convince ourselves that where we are is where we want to be. And I think that's where I was for most of my life, thinking it's not exactly what I wanted to be, but I was so scared of doing that first step that I just convinced myself that it was good. This is exactly what happened when I married my first husband, because I was thinking exactly that nothing, but nothing good is going to to have, to, nothing good is going to happen, um, you know. So, what age were you when your life shifted? Well, I was twenty three when I married my ex husband, and he left when I was around thirty. And so, um, for the for the next couple of years, I was doing all of these, you know, following my my heart following my my decisions whatever i wanted to do um you know it was it was the most the most incredible thing i think was that when i came back and i was talking to people and telling them about my experiences all of a sudden i realized that actually i was the bravest person in the room because everyone else just dreams about doing things but then they stay in their fears they stay in their realities and only see the why they shouldn't be doing something and not why they should and here I was that broke all the rules. I knew that I couldn't stay in that place where I was living through my comfort zone. I couldn't be that person anymore that just says, well, you know, I really want to do something, but 
I, I don't know how it's going to go, so I'm not going to do that. That couldn't be me anymore. And, mm. and now that, that's actually how, how I live my life now. So, you know, when I was doing my master's, I, I you know, started my career in IT. I was a user experience designer. And then when I realized that I didn't enjoy that anymore, I would, because of this attitude of, you know, this formula that I have, I decided to, to jump ship. And then, you know, when, when my last contract came to an end, I just went and I did my coaching course. And, uh, and that's what I've been doing now for, for the past five years or so. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. It really is this incredible journey. And it's also great to know that it was like midlife, you know, that you all of a sudden your life turned around. So for those that are struggling that, I mean, how, what would you say to people that are maybe struggling in 40s or 50s where they still haven't heard their voice? Would you say that it's too late for them? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I think we, everything happens at the right time and at the time that it meant to happen. And even if you, your life have been very challenging and were full of, of pain and hurt, anything and everything that we go through is preparing us to the person that we are today. And there is wisdom in all of that, in all of the pain and all of this journey that we go through. And so now, now we have a choice, really. We need to ask ourselves, you know, if, if we are in victimhood, right? If we are in that place that says life is happening to me, then it keeps us in victimhood. And when we turn around, we actually say, life is happening for me and all of these things that happened they they bring their own wisdom with it with them now I can make sense of it now I can find my purpose now I can understand what it is that I'm meant to be doing because I have this empowerment of knowing that everything happened for a reason because it is part of my journey and where I'm meant to be so, yeah and we don't and we don't change when we're a victim you know we're, we're thinking that things are happening at us and we feel out of control like we can't control our destiny but in reality we are absolutely in control our manifestation manifestation makes all those tiny little decisions every day so yeah we kind of lose our control when we lose that control we really lose our our journey right yeah and i think it's very easy to to, to, to do that to to really start asking you know why is it happening to me it's not fair, other people, you know, be living in, in injustice. But actually, when you decide that you don't want to do that anymore, you can absolutely take control over your life and, and start looking at things and events and, and opportunities in a different way, one, you know, in a new way that is actually more empowering. And, and, and that's the kind of things that I, I work with, with my clients because I help them to, to see that actually the way that they're thinking about things at the moment is really uh, stemming from their habits and patterns and conditioning and, and other things like that. And now it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to say, do you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. So what do I want? And now you need to go back into your inner wisdom to the things that you know are true for yourself. And so you, you build on that to create the life that you actually want to, to live and, and, and the, the life that you want for yourself. People that tell me, you know, how, how do I, how do I recognize that I'm living from the, this negative self-talk, that I'm in that circle of cycle of comfort zone and, and not doing? And, and what I, I invite them to do really is to start listening to the conversation that they have with themselves. Because this convers these conversations, they're, they're, they have the key for everything. Some people are so ingrained in this negative self-talk, they actually think it's their intuition. And so imagine live, going through life like this, that you're constantly thinking, I shouldn't do something, I shouldn't start, I shouldn't talk, I shouldn't raise my voice, I shouldn't make myself heard. This is constantly living from fear and from you know, that place that is the comfort zone. And so I have um, three steps that I, I suggest to people that they can follow uh, when, whenever they, they listen to the conversation that they have with themselves. So say that they want to maybe take up a new hob hobby or, or start a new business and and they are very scared they constantly go back into the comfort zone and, zone and into that habit of saying i can't do it i'm not good enough I'm, I'm going to fail i'm going to lose all of my money everyone is going to laugh at me these kind of conversations they're habits so they're coming up at every opportunity every time that we're doing something that we're not used to doing so the first thing to do is to to really ask yourself when i have this question this fear this negative conversation, can I be 100% sure that this negative thing is going to happen? So if I want to start my own business and I'm standing there 
you know, in fear because I'm so nervous about putting myself out there and being seen and, and you know, and maybe the, the, of course, the opportunity of failing as well. The question, the first question has to be, is it 100% sure true? Can I be 100% sure that I'm going to fail, that I'm going to lose all of my money, that everyone is going to laugh at me? And because you can see immediately that actually, I don't know, I can't be 100% uh, sure that this is going to happen. And so now you recognize that you are in negative self mode, neg negative self conversation mode. And the next step to do is to say, okay, so if I am putting the negative conversation to one side and I don't listen to the fears, what is the, the, the golden nugget, the wisdom that I can get from this question? So for example, if I want to, to start my own business and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose all my money, uh, which is a fair question, it's a, it's a fair fear. But the, the, the golden nugget that you have here, the wisdom is to, to say that actually, maybe I'm not com completely bought into the idea of this business. Maybe I need to go back to the drawing board and, and rethink some of my propositions. Maybe I need to do some more research, look at some more technology. This negative, what we consider to be a negative conversation actually brings with it an opportunity to pause and to see what it is that actually scares us so that we can find the right solution that is 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 right for us. So it's not really about the the conversation, the negative conversation. It's about what is my fear is masking here. And so this the third step is actually take that pause, take do the research, find out what is scaring you, so that when you come back to it, you're actually feeling more knowledgeable, empowered, that you are actually in a in a better mind mindset, basically. Yeah, no, I love that. Thank you for those, for those steps. Did you have a, you had something special for our listeners today, as far as one of your free offers, you want to share that with them? Yes, absolutely. Uh, one of my free online courses that I, I offer uh, is, is basically, it's called Five Steps to a Confident You. And it really helps people to, to, to lean into that, this conversation that they're having with themselves, where they really live from fear rather than from empowerment. And the, the five steps to a confident you is taking you into on, on this journey on finding out what is scaring them, what do they not dare, what do they not want to do, what do they, how are they not showing up, and giving them these hints and insights to, to recognizing that actually if they don't lean into the fear, they can lean into the wisdom. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And I'll go ahead and leave that link for you guys down below in the description. So you guys can go ahead and check out that free offer about confidence to really step into that. Because as you can see, it literally can change your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on today. This has been really amazing. Um, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to say before we jump off? I, I, the, the thing that I, I always say to, to my clients when, they, when I see that they live in fear I, I always say, you know, we're not put on this earth to struggle and we're not put on this earth to sit on the sofa and think what if and wish that we've done something. So we will never be ready. There is always more things, more, more questions, more doubt that will come in front of, of our, you know, on our journey or in front of our path. But really take that first step. Take that first step because everything will be different afterwards. Oh, she makes me she makes me ready to face my fears. Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.